So, in this uh, 40 uh, lecture series on the welding engineering, this is the seventh module, uh, which uh, is based on the inspection and testing of uh, the weld joint. In the earlier module, earlier six modules, we have talked about the introduction of welding engineering, uh, physics of the welding arc, uh, power sources for the welding, welding processes, uh, design of the weld joints and uh, the heat flow in welding. And uh, all these aspects play a big role in development of the successful weld joint. But uh, uh, there is another important aspect uh, which contributes significantly in uh, not just uh, on the development of the sound weld joint, but also helps in taking suitable decision that uh, whether a particular weld joint can be used in any given situation or not. So, for that purpose it is important that uh, the uh, during the development of the weld joint proper inspection is done in at the different uh, stages. And uh, once the joint uh, is developed, then it is tested to see whether the things which have been done are perfect or not and whether the joint developed is suitable for a particular application or not. And therefore, in this chapter we will be talking about first the purpose of the inspection and testing of the weld joints and uh, then we will see that what are the different stages where uh, we should perform this kind of the inspection. These are three stages, one is before welding, second during the welding and third after the welding. So, after the welding we try to assess the weld joint qualitatively and the quantitatively. So, to assess the weld joint quantitatively mainly the destructive tests are used while the qualitative assessment of the weld joint is done with the help of the non-destructive test. Uh, destructive test will be giving us the numerical values of the different char important characteristics of the weld joint, uh, while uh, the non-destructive test will indicate uh, whether a given weld joint which has been developed is uh, a sound or not and for that purpose various uh, the tests are used uh, which uh, uh, are uh, uh, which are found to be useful for detecting the discontinuities present either at the surface or in the subsurface regions. Uh, and uh, in this presentation under the destructive tests, we will be talking about uh, the tensile bend and the hardness tests. So, uh, starting uh, with the purpose of the inspection and testing. Uh, the purpose of uh, any inspection and testing in the development of the weld joint is mainly related with that uh, taking up all the necessary inspection and testing related activities, so that a sound weld joint can be developed. Uh, so, primarily purpose if objective is to ensure the development of the quality weld joint, but uh, to assess the quality of the weld joint we need to see it is qualitatively and quantitatively. So, qualitative assessment of the weld joint mainly based on that uh, uh, whether it is sound or not, if it is not then what are the sizes and the distribution of the discontinuities present in the weld joint. And uh, the in qual quantitative uh, quality assessment of the weld joint, we try to see uh, the different characteristics of the weld joint like the hardness, tensile strength, ductility, toughness fracture toughness, uh, along percentage elongation. So, there are various uh, tests which uh, are used to uh, check the performance, uh, mechanical performance of the weld joints quantitatively. Apart from these uh, tests, uh, there are many other tests which are performed on the weld joints depending upon the purpose uh, for which it has been developed. These tests may be conducted at a low temperature or at high temperature say in form of the creep test or ductile to brittle transition test for low temperature applications. Uh, these tests uh, can be uh, can also be in the form of corrosion test to assess the corrosion resistance of the weld joint and in the different environments. And apart from the corrosion test, uh, the quantitative quantitative assessment of the weld joints can also be done to see whether the joint is able to understand uh, withstand under the um, uh, wear conditions or not, because the weld joints uh, frequently subjected to the number of uh, uh, types of the wear during the service 
uh, these uh, may be in form of the adhesive wear, abrasive wear, corrosive wear or solid uh, particle erosion, uh, uh, cavitation, uh, fretting wear. So, there are various forms of wear for which a weld joint can be subjected. So, to assess the suitability of the weld joints for those uh, forms of the wear, um, the, the wear tests are also uh, conducted on the weld joint. So, uh, there is a huge range of uh, the destructive tests or the tests uh, which can be done on the weld joints to, uh, to characterize them quantitatively and so as to assess the suitability of uh, those joints for uh, uh, specific applications. So, the third uh, uh, objective of uh, performing the inspection and testing is to see uh, the suitability of the weld joints for a specific application. So, um, a specific application say if a particular criteria has been established that uh, weld joint should have this much load carrying capacity or this much corrosion resistance or at least this much uh, the ductility, then the weld joint should qualify for those requirements before, um, before uh, using the weld joints for those uh, specific applications. So, uh, basically, uh, the inspection and testings are performed to first to ensure that the quality welds are developed, then to check whether the developed joint is is a fit, is a fit or means it is a quality weld or not, which can be done qualitatively and quantitatively and thereafter to assess the suitability of the weld for a specific application. So, as far as inspection of the weld joint is concerned in the development stage, in its development stage there are three different stages of, in which inspection can be performed. One uh, is the in before welding where we try to check whether the things uh, which are to be used in a proper form and the proper condition or not. Uh, so, to produce the weld quality, uh, so to produce a quality weld joint, it is necessary that an eye is kept on what is being done at uh, the three different stages of the welding. Uh, before welding, we try to see the cleanliness, whether the fing surfaces have been perfectly cleaned using the recommended method or not, whether the method uh, um, of mechanical cleaning or the chemical cleaning has been used for cleaning the fing surfaces. Then uh, whether the edges have been prepared using the recommended method like the mechanical method which involving the machining or the thermal method depending on the type of the steels or the suitable kind of the edge has been prepared or some other kind of the edge has been prepared like these may be in form of the uh, V groove, U groove, J groove, double V, double J, double be well etcetera. So, whether the right kind of the edge has been prepared with the required dimensions or not and thereafter we also try to see what our consumables are being used for development of the weld joint, they are of the right kind and the recommended ones or not. These may be in form of whether the waking of the electrode has been done up to in the right conditions in order to drive off the moisture from the uh, electrode coatings or the correct kind of the electrode is being used the suitable gas of the suitable correct grade of the uh, shielding gas is being used for development of uh, uh, will be which will be used for developing the weld joint. So, whatever the welding consumables are to be used they are according to the recommendations or not or if there is any deviation then the suitable quality of those consumables should be brought in for development of the weld joint. Then during the inspection, it is very important to see that whatever edges have been prepared according to the recommendations and the welding consumables have been arranged for development of the weld joint, they are used properly as per the requirement and for that purpose, first is that the whatever heat source, whatever type of heat source is being used for melting the fang surfaces and the filler material. Uh, that should be manipulated that is manipulated properly as per requirement. So, that suitable heat input can be given uh, to the fang surfaces uh, for uh, achieving the desired degree of the penetration and fusion of the fang surfaces in order to develop the sound weld joint. And the second uh, uh, the welding parameters which are to be used for developing the weld joints for example, the pressure of the oxygen and the fuel gas in case of the gas welding, the selection of the welding current and the arc voltage and welding speed, shielding gas and the electrode uh, and the elect type of the electrode uh, say in case of the tungsten electrode or SMAW suitable kind of the electrode has been selected and the same is being used or not. 
So, whatever uh, the input parameters have been selected, they are being properly used or not that is checked in the uh, during the welding stage. And uh, these things will uh, basically all these parameters which uh, uh, will be uh, which will be affecting the heat input and protection of the weld pool. So, uh, since the development of the weld joint uh, is predominantly governed by the kind of heat input which is being given and how the weld pool being formed is protected from the atmospheric contamination. So, based on these two the quality of the weld is determined significantly. So, if whatever the recommended input parameters are there, uh, they are actually being used during the welding or not that should be checked uh, properly in the inspection stage. Then after the welding, uh, the material uh, after the welding how the slag is being removed after the welding or uh, in, in during the inter process whether slag is being removed properly or not. Otherwise, this uh, will uh, the left out slag uh, between the weld beads, uh, especially in the toe region, will be leading to the development of the inclusions, and uh, the pinning is being done in systematic manner uh, and using the proper kind of conditions or not. And whatever post weld heat treatment has been recommended is being done under the correct conditions uh, and at the correct stage or not. Many times it is recommended that. Uh, the post weld heat treatment is done immediately after the welding before the weld joint comes down to the room temperature. So, whether that is being followed or not. It is also checked that whatever clamps and fixtures have been used for during the development of weld joint, they are being removed at the right stage after relieving the regular stresses or not. So, different important things that affect the uh, quality of the weld and uh, that can affect the performance of uh, the weld after uh, the development. Uh, all that is uh, checked uh, uh, that whether all, uh, all those things are being performed systematically and properly or not. So, uh, so th th this is what uh, is done as far as inspection is concerned in different stages. Uh, we know that the sel uh, selection of the optimal method and the op optimum set of the parameters for each step of which are to be used for development of the weld joint uh, must be meticulously followed in the execution stage of the production of the weld. Uh, because all these factors like the uh, suitable method which have been used and the par various parameters associated with that particular method. And uh, these are uh, whatever has been selected these are being actually used uh, in the development stage of the weld joint. Uh, will be determining the quality of the weld joint. So, in the inspection stage, inspection mainly is carried out to assess the ground realities in respect of the progress of the work or how meticulously things are being implemented in the shop floor. Uh, on the paper, all the things may be all right, right from the uh, cleaning uh, of the surfaces, edge preparation to the selection of the welding process and welding parameters. And thereafter, post weld heat treatment steps like removal of the slag or the post weld heat treatment, and all those things may be perfect. But at the execution stage, what is being actually done to have a check on that? Uh, the inspection uh, plays a very important role uh, because uh, this will be deciding whether the desired quality of the weld will be obtained or not after development of the weld joint. So, inspection is mainly performed to assess the ground realities in respect of the progress or the work or how meticulously the things are being implemented uh, during the welding, uh, during the development of the stage. Uh, uh, once the joint has been developed, it becomes important to see what is the quality of the weld which has been developed. So, for that purpose testing is carried out and testing helps in, to assess the suitability of the weld joint for a particular application and it also helps to take the decision on whether to go ahead with the further welding, uh, further processing or accept or reject the component say if it is being uh, done in uh, testing is being done in uh, processes stage, in process stage then uh, it can reveal the major deficiency in the weld joint which uh, uh, is uh, being developed then this will uh, 
uh, this will avoid the further processing of the defective components. So, it, so basically when the testing is done, it helps to take the decision whether to go ahead with the further processing of the in process component or not. So, the testing methods of the weld joint are broadly uh, classified as the destructive test and non-destructive test. Means, uh, once the joint has been developed, either it is in the in process stage or it has been completely over. Um, this test uh, t are carried out in the weld joints mainly for uh, in the two uh, mainly using two approaches. One is the destructive test, and another is non-destructive test. In the destructive test, some sort of the damage takes place in the component which is being uh, tested. The extent of damage may be more or less, but most of the time it is observed that component uh, which has been tested by the destructive test is damaged to such an extent that it cannot be used for further uh, for the targeted application and therefore, is, uh, the, the tested pieces um, uh, are normally uh, uh, kept and retained, but they are not used for the purpose we, for which it was developed. And uh, thus, uh, once the component either complete fracture takes place after this destructive testing or uh, the damage takes place to such an extent that uh, it cannot be used uh, for the intended purpose. Uh, so, this is the main negative side as far as the destructive tests are concerned. Well, in case of the non-destructive tests, uh, these are the quality most of the time these are the qualitative tests and the extent of damage in these tests is not so serious. Uh, even in some of the cases, the uh, uh, in, in, uh, negligible or the no uh, adverse effect uh, is observed on the component which has been tested by the non-destructive test methods and therefore, the component which has been tested by the non-destructive test methods can be used for the purpose for which it was developed. So, its usability is not adversely affected even after the testing of the component or the weld joint by the non-destructive uh, testing method. So, as far as inspection is concerned, the inspection uh, and normally uh, the visual inspection uh, is found very useful uh, during the development of a stage or before uh, the development of uh, the weld joint even after the uh, development even after the development of the weld joint. So, what are the different uh, uh, aspects that can be uh, assessed through the visual inspection? Visual inspection reflects the quality of the external features of the weld joint such as the weld bead profile indicating the weld bead and the reinforcement bead angle and the external defects such as craters, cracks and the distortion. So, these things uh, can be done uh, using the suitable meteorological instruments to measure the weld bead related geometry, uh, weld bead geometry related parameters such as the reinforcement or weld bead width or the bead angle and uh, the visual inspection during the processing itself if these have been developed then either the weld joint can be discarded or um, the, uh, the suitable steps can be taken to repair uh, these uh, uh, defects which have been developed in, in the weld joint. So, further processing of the defective components can be stopped uh, once if uh, and the major defects uh, are uh, established through the visual inspection and during the in process stage. Then there is a huge range of the uh, uh, tests which are uh, um, which uh, belong to the destructive test category. Destructive tests are those uh, in, in when these are performed. Um, the material uh, of the test means the, the sample which is to be tested by the destructive test and gets damaged to such an extent that uh, it cannot be used for the purpose for which it was developed and uh, it gives uh, means the destructive tests test most of the time gives uh, the characteristics uh, characteristic value in the numerical terms. So, the quantitative data is obtained regarding the characteristics of the weld joint after the destructive test. So, uh, and there are many destructive tests which are commonly performed to assess the capability of the weld joints uh, uh, and most of the time these are uh, and these are the mechanical tests in which one or other kind of the load is applied on the weld joint which is to be tested to assess its capability to carry the external load and uh, these tests uh, uh, 
uh, involve the, these uh, the, the, the common destructive tests include uh, the hardness test which indicates the resistance to the indentation or the resistance to the abrasive wear resist, uh, abrasion uh, and uh, the toughness which uh, indicates the amount of the energy that it will be absorbing under the impact load conditions. So, basically it uh, indicates the ability to withstand under the impact load conditions and the bend test uh, uh, in which the sample is subjected to the uh, bending and uh, this test uh, uh, basically used to assess uh, the extent of the elongation uh, or the ductility of the weld joint. Uh, which exist with the weld or uh, it is also used to see whether uh, there is an internal um, defect or not. And uh, uh, the tensile test uh, which uh, is mainly used to see under the tensile load conditions how the weld joint will perform and this test is commonly used to, uh, to identify the parameters like the modulus of elasticity of uh, the weld joint then uh, the uh, yield strength of the weld joint, ultimate strength of the weld joint and, uh, and the kind of uh, uh, the deformation which will be occurring at the different stages of the tensile loading and the el total elongation of the weld joint uh, till the fracture means in the up to the fracture stage. So, uh, the uh, tensile test for developing the welding uh, th this test is very commonly used in the industry and it is uh, mainly used for developing the welding procedure specification and assessing the suitability of the weld joint for particular application. So, when the welding procedure is to be established for the new material system or for new application and uh, normally uh, the weld joints are developed using the different set of the welding parameters and then the capability of the weld joint is assessed. Uh, through the uh, tensile test to see whether the weld joint will be able to take up the service load or not and based on that a uh, suitable decision regarding the welding procedure specification is taken. So, this test is mainly used for is also used for um, establishing the welding procedure specifications apart from assessing the suitability of the weld joint for particular application. So, for conducting the tensile test, uh, 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 the tensile tests are basically conducted to uh, quantitatively measure the tensile properties of the weld joint which are in terms of um, the yield strength, ultimate strength and the ductility. Ductility is measured in terms of the percentage elongation and these uh, uh, tests can be performed in the amb either in the ambient conditions or in the low temperature environment or in the high temperature conditions or in corrosive environment depending upon the application for which test to be for which uh, service this test is to be conducted this uh, the tensile test can be performed in the different environmental conditions. So, as to assess its capability to take up the tensile load uh, under the different can type of the service conditions and also to see that. Uh, under those conditions what uh, kind of the yield strength it offers, what is the ultimate strength and what is its ductility under those uh, either low temperature, high temperature, corrosive uh, uh, environmental conditions. So, all that uh, will depend upon the need uh, for which the, the weld joint is to be developed, uh, the test will be conducted in the suitable uh, environment and when these, uh, these tests are conducted the load magnitude is increased gradually. Uh, so, that the strain rate uh, is uh, significantly lower and it is uh, in certain band of the uh, increase in strain per unit time. So, uh, uh, so means this, uh, is the, this uh, the load is applied at certain constant strain rate, uh, so that uh, and that will depend upon the kind of material which is to be tested. So, this uh, uh, load is applied uh, at a constant strain rate until the fracture takes place and uh, during this uh, uh, the different uh, and during this uh, um, the load versus the elongation curve is obtained and uh, using this uh, many times the engineering stress and strain curve is obtained using uh, the suitable uh, plot and when this plot is obtained and that plot helps to uh, see that what kind what is the um, the elastic zone and where uh, the plastic zone starts in. 
So, what is the yield strength, what is the ultimate strength and where fracture is occurring. So, different parameters uh, which can be obtained from the tensile test can be easily obtained from the uh, load elongation curve or from the engineering stress and strain curve which is obtained after the tensile test. So, the tensile properties uh, of the weld joint are obtained in the two ways. One uh, means uh, that is how means uh, the tensile test can be conducted in the weld joint in, in two ways. One is where the specimen is taken completely from the weld region only or in another case when the specimen is taken from the transverse section of the weld joint. So, for that purpose uh, and according to that we uh, have the two types of the sample, one either tensile sample is taken from the transverse direction of the weld joint which will be consisting the base metal heat affected zone, weld zone. Um, and then heat affected zone and the base material, while in case of the all weld specimen, uh, the entire uh, the tensile specimen is taken from the weld region only. So, these two types of the specimens means the tensile test in case of the weld joint can be conducted in two ways, one is sample is taken from the transverse direction of the weld joint or uh, the entire weld or the tensile sample is made. Uh, of uh, the weld metal only and this is what can be seen in the next diagram. So, say this is uh, the case when the weld, uh, the tensile, this is the uh, plate with the weld joint, this is the weld region and the sample is obtained from the transverse direction of the weld, the, the, this is the weld center say. So, the specimen is being taken from the transverse direction of the weld. Uh, so, here at the center of the weld will be having uh, uh, center of this specimen, we will be having the weld region. Uh, th so, this is the first case where transfer section of the weld is obtained and uh, this specimen will have the um, waste metal, then the heat affected zone close to the fusion boundary and then weld region and uh, then again the uh, heat affected zone and thereafter base metal. So, the second uh, type of the sample is that all weld specimen where uh, say this is the top view of the weld uh, of the weld joint, the two uh, base metals, and this is the weld region. So a specimen is obtained only uh, from the uh, means entire tensile specimen is made of the weld metal only. So all other things are discarded, and the machined sample is obtained from the weld region only to develop the all weld specimen. So depending upon the application, we can if you want to assess the weld quality only uh, then all weld specimen is made uh, otherwise uh, the trans uh, transverse weld specimen weld uh, joint weld uh, uh, transverse uh, section is used for developing the tensile specimen. So, uh, this will uh, it is very common to use the transverse section of the weld joint because in this case we uh, get uh, the mechanical performance of all regions and the uh, not just of the weld metal and it will give uh, the real performance of uh, um, the entire weld joint which uh, will be the combination of the base metal heat affected zone and the weld region. Uh, so, wherever is the weak zone the failure will be occurring accordingly. So, that will form the basis for deciding that what kind of the, uh, what kind of uh, the load it can take up during the service under the real life conditions. So, the tensile test results, once the tensile test is completed, the, the tensile tests are reported for uh, the yield strength, ultimate strength, uh, percentage, uh, the ductility in terms of the percentage elongation and these results are most of the time is are supported by the suitable engineering stress and strain curve or the load extension diagram, uh, which will be showing the modulus of elasticity, elongation at fracture, yield and ultimate strength. One typical uh, engineering stress uh, and strain diagram which uh, is showing uh, the basically uh, the kind of uh, uh, the stress and strain curve relationship. This is the elastic uh, zone and thereafter we get uh, the plastic zone and uh, here this is the ultimate strength and this is the, uh, the elongation corresponding to the fracture, this is the fracture zone. So, uh, the, the typical uh, stress strain diagram uh, for say this is for the stellar steel, this will be showing means this diagram shows that the wa what is the elastic uh, uh, means the uh, linear uh, the uh, linear portion of the diagram corresponding to 
the uh, uh, kind of up to the elastic limit, then what is the uh, yield strength and what is the ultimate strength and what is the level at which the fracture will be occurring and the uh, it will also be showing the elongation corresponding to the different stages of the loading. Uh, so, uh, say uh, the, this is the uh, elastic uh, deformation then the that uniform uh, deformation which will be occurring in this particular zone after the elastic deformation to the uh, uh, after the uh, you can say yield strength limit to the ultimate strength. Uh, so, this is the portion of the uh, the plastic deformation zone and this is uh, termed as the uniform uh, deformation zone which will be occurring in the entire length of the uh, uh, gauge entire gauge length of the specimen. Uh, so, uh, once the test is completed, uh, we will report the results in terms of uh, the modulus of uh, elasticity, yield strength, ultimate strength and uh, the elongation at the fracture and uh, these results uh, of the test uh, must be given along with the certain information like the what type of the sample was used for conducting the test, whether sample was taken from the transverse well, trans, uh, whether the sample is of the transverse weld or all weld uh, specimen was used, what kind of a strain rate was used for conducting the test and uh, at what temperature test was conducted or any other specific environment was used for conducting the test or uh, the texture of uh, uh, the fracture surface. Uh, once the test is conducted like it was uh, the flat fracture or very um, and the dull or very bright and the crystalline surface is observed and then the fracture location where from fracture took place during the test uh, that is mentioned whether it, is, it took place from the base metal or heat affected zone or from the fusion boundary or from the weld center. So, that uh, location of the fracture uh, is uh, specified and what type of fracture was uh, observed whether it was ductile where, where typical uh, localized knacking is observed um, near the fracture zone or uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, brittle fracture took place that is observed from the very straight uh, flat fracture surface and uh, the knacking is very uh, negligible. Uh, then uh, we will we'll be talking about the another important test that is the bend test and it is commonly used uh, destructive test. In, the, in this test uh, basically the specimen is, uh, uh, is loaded to bend under the control condition. So, that the control bending leads to uh, the uh, cracking of the specimen from the weak zone and uh, when the sample is uh, cracked, then it will be revealing the internal details of the welded specimen. So, in especially in case of the uh, weld joints, the band test is carried out mainly to assess the ductility and this test and this ductility assessed based on the extent up to which the weld joint can be bent before cracks appear on the surface. Uh, of the joint which is uh, subjected to the bend test and it is also used uh, to assess the soundness of the weld joint uh, which we can uh, see when the surface uh, fracture after the uh, uh, bend test and uh, we can see whether there is internal, internal porosity inclusions or penetration is perfect or not or other micro size defects are uh, present in the weld joint. So, in order to conduct this uh, test basically bending of the weld joint is done uh, either from the face side uh, that is the upper side of the weld or the root side uh, depending upon the purpose. If we expect uh, means which side of the, uh, the weld joint is expected to have the defect or will have the tendency to uh, fail that side is subjected to the bend test. So, bending we can do either from the face side or from the root side depending upon the purpose whether the face or the root side uh, of the weld is to be assessed. So, uh, for uh, uh, the performing the bend test, uh, bend test is performed using the simple compressive or the bending load and the suitable standard size uh, the die is used for this purpose or very free bending is done 
depending upon the case, we can use either free bending or the guided bend test. In free bend test, uh, between the two simply support, uh, like between the two supports, uh, the weld joint is placed and then uh, the compressive load is applied for the bending take uh, for the bending to take place. So, in this case like the, uh, uh, the, 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 the root will be bent because this uh, bending will be basically occurring from this side and, uh, uh, and the, the specimen is largely kept free and the bending takes place uh, through, uh, through these uh, the, uh, supports and uh, in case of uh, this is the another situation where uh, the bend test uh, for uh, conducting the bend test, uh, the compressive load is applied on to the specimen to be tested and but the in, in this case the bending can take place from any of the sites. So, to avoid that possibility uh, the free uh, sorry guided bend, uh, guided bend test is performed. In the guided bend test, uh, um, the uh, guided uh, bending is performed by placing the weld joint over the die as per needs uh, in uh, uh, and it offers uh, the better controlled conditions uh, of the specimen and of the loading and then load is increased gradually so that the bending takes place. So, in this case very guided bend um, uh, 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 the die, die is used and the, the load is applied from the top and above the die the, the weld joint to be tested is placed. In this case the face will be subjected to the bend when the load is applied and we keep on applying the bending load until the cracks start to appear on the surface which is being bent. So, here in this case the face bending will be done while in this case uh, uh, the root bending uh, is uh, done. Uh, and uh, this bending is continued until the cracks start to appear in the surface which is being bent. So, according to the need uh, we can perform either free bending or the guided bending. Guided bending is considered to be better because the bending is done in very controlled conditions using die and with the application of the load and this bending is allowed to happen means the, this load is applied uh, on to the specimens until the cracks start to appear. Uh, either on the face or on the root of the weld according to the face and the bend test uh, and the root bend test and the angle of the bend at this stage when cracks start to appear um, is used as a measure of the ductility greater is the uh, bending is possible means higher is the uh, angle of the bend and uh, greater uh, will be the ductility. So, greater is the kind of uh, amount of the bending which is possible prior uh, to the cracking of the specimen that will indicate the greater the ductility of the weld joint. So, the fracture of the joint uh, from the uh, face or from the root side due to the bending reveals the presence of the weld discontinuities if any present in the surface of uh, the component. This uh, diagram shows the typical bend test of the, uh, the aluminum 7039 aluminum uh, weld joint which was uh, welded using uh, the friction steel welding and the top side shows uh, the root bend test and here this shows the, the face bend test. So, depending upon we, if we want to see whether whatever welding process was uh, used for development of the weld joint, it had uh, developed a sound weld joint which is free from the defect uh, then under the bending test uh, during the bending test all these defects if any they are present in the weld joint they will be revealed and they will facilitate the growth of uh, the crack and uh, the, uh, the fracture will be facilitated by these discontinuities if they are present in the, uh, the uh, weld joint. So, the bend test uh, will uh, help us to see that what extent of the bending is possible prior to the uh, cracking of the component uh, uh, from the weld region or uh, what uh, or uh, it will also help to see that uh, if any disc weld discontinuities are present inside the weld because fracture surface helps us to show helps us to see uh, in the whether uh, the discontinuities are present in the weld region or not. Then another important test is the hardness test which is commonly performed onto the weld joint because it is common to see that uh, 
the, uh, due to the application of the heat during the welding and the weld thermal cycle experienced by the heat affected zone, uh, the very uh, desirable and undesirable effects are uh, uh, observed in the weld joint. Uh, and uh, to see that uh, uh, and many times it has been observed that uh, uh, hard, uh, some of the uh, metal systems get hardened like the hardenable steels and the cast irons while other metal systems like uh, precipitation hardenable aluminum alloys they are softened with the application of the heat. So, both uh, hardening and softening are the common phenomena uh, uh, which is observed uh, in the heat affected zone uh, during the welding of uh, and the different types of the base metals. So, whether the hardening is taking place or the softening is taking place and up to what extent they will be affecting the mechanical performance of uh, the weld joint to assess that it is common to conduct uh, the hardness test. So, that uh, the, their, um, uh, the, the effect of the weld thermal cycle on the performance of the weld joint can be assessed because the hardness test is very simple test and it gives a lot of information about that if any microstructural transformation has taken place or any embrittlement has taken place due to the application of the weld thermal cycle. So, what is the philosophy or the approach which is used for conducting the hardness test that is what we will see in this. Uh, uh, part now. The hardness test, uh, hardness is defined as the resistance to the indentation means uh, up to what extent it can resist if the load is uh, very pointed, very pointed load is applied onto the specimen surface. So, whether it can resist that indentation or penetration by the external load uh, which is being applied through the very pointed body. So, it is commonly used as a measure of the resistance to the abrasion or to the scratching. Uh, because once the indentation has taken place through the pointed body, then due to the relative motion between the, uh, the surface and the pointed body, this will lead to the development of the scratch and the abrasive wear. So, that resistance, if, the, if there is great resistance to the indentation, then there will be resistance to the abrasive wear and scratching also. And that is why hardness is commonly used as a measure of uh, the abrasive wear or of uh, resistance to the scratching. The formation of the scratch or the abrasion uh, involves the relative movement between in the, the that hard indenting body and uh, the surface. So, when there is a relative motion uh, between the two, it, these will be resulting in the formation of a scratch or uh, one abrasive mark will be left in uh, provided uh, there is indentation. If the two bodies are having the relative motion with respect to each other, even if they are in contact. Uh, but if uh, the two are not uh, means out of the two one is not indenting onto the other then there would not be any uh, uh, scratch or any kind of the abrasion. So, it is important that some sort of uh, indentation takes place for a scratching or for abrasion to occur. So, the indentation is a penetration of a pointed object uh, into the other object which is softer under the external load conditions and the resistance to the penetration of the pointed object uh, that is no, known as the indenter depends upon the hardness of the sample on which the load is applied. So, approach of this test is very simple that uh, um, you see to understand this we can use this diagram here. Uh, we, we can take uh, the object of uh, any shape but it is common to use uh, the conical shape objects or the pyramid shape objects where a square, a square pyramid is used and uh, here these objects uh, like this or the ball or the ball shape uh, object is used through. Uh, so, uh, whatever is the shape all these are of uh, you can say the pointed this is cone, this is pyramid and this is ball shape. So, whatever is the surface if this is the surface then a standard load is applied through this object say load P or the load P is applied through this pyramid onto the surface or load P is applied on uh, through this ball onto the surface. So, under a given load 
oh, and uh, who, uh, under the given load when it is transferred through a particular object, uh, how this object is uh, going deeper into uh, the surface. So, in case of the uh, this uh, conical shape, it will be go on the application of the load, it will be going deeper like this. So, if the material is soft, it will be going very deep and, and forming the deeper indentation and if it is hard, then the indentation will be limited. So, the softer is the material, greater or the deeper will be the depth up to which the object will be able to penetrate. So, this is what we can say, this depth will be indicating us the, the hardness of the material. So, for conical indenter, for a given load, if greater is the depth of indentation, softer will be the material, means the hardness will be lower. Similarly, for the pyramid test up to how deep it goes in, that will indicate the uh, its resistance to the indentation. But in this test, instead of since this is the square pyramid, so instead of measuring the depth, we try to measure the, in, the size of the indentation which is being formed at the top surface. So, this uh, the length of these diagonals are basically used to characterize the the extent of damage which is taking place at the surface. So, greater is the size like say if this if, the, if deeper is the penetration, so greater will be the size of the indentation which will be left at the top surface. So, greater will be the dimension of these diagonals. So, average length of these diagonals is used as a measure of the hardness. So, greater is the length means deeper is the penetration uh, and the deeper is the penetration indicating the deeper means the lower resistance to the indentation and so the lower hardness. So, here very simple uh, that in this case the depth is an important criteria and here the size of indentation which is being made at the surface that is important criteria and indicating the. So, lower is the depth or lower is the size of indentation means lower is the uh, length of these di average length of these diagonals. Uh, that will be uh, and uh, so lower is the depth or smaller is the size average size of these diagonals uh, these will be indicating the higher hardness similarly for the ball shape ball shape one indentation will be found for the hard materials it will be very shallow then for the softer materials it will be deeper and the deeper so in in this case in the ball shape basically in the the kind of the impression being formed at the top surface whether it is of very small or of it is very large size indentation is being formed at the surface. This is what we can say corresponding to this. If it is a small then it will be corresponding to this like this. So, if the surface is having the larger indentation that in case of the ball indenter that will indicate the lower hardness of the material. So, uh, we apply basically a one particular load through the uh, pointed objects and then try to see that up to what extent it is either penetrating or the kind of uh, impression is being formed on the surface of the uh, specimen which is being tested. In general, deeper is the penetration or uh, larger is the size of indentation, uh, lower will be the hardness of the material and this approach is used in the different hardness test methods which will be uh, described further in these. Uh, so, basically the resistance to the indentation uh, of the pointed object uh, resistance uh, resistance to the uh, penetration of the pointed object depends upon the hardness of the sample on through which load is being applied onto the object. So, the different uh, hardness tests are uh, there which are commonly used like Brinell, Rockwell, Vickers, Noop and the micro hardness. So, in, in these hardness tests, all these hardness tests use the same principle that in all these methods, every standard load is applied through the indenter and the and the measuring the penetration in terms of either diameter or the, the diagonal length or the depth of indentation. So, what uh, the, the, the form in which uh, the indentation, uh, the dimension, which dimension of the indentation is measured that will depend upon the kind of method which is being used for performing the test, but the general principle is same in all these hardness tests that a particular load is applied and then indentation is developed 
and then uh, either the diameter or the diagonal or the depth of indentation is measured. And this is the example say in case of the ball, the indentation is taking place like this. So, the indentation diameter is measured at the surface in case of the cone. Uh, here the depth of indentation is measured and uh, the average length of the diagonals is measured in case of this uh, pyramid shape indenter. And in all the cases say the standard load is applied and then uh, the extent of damage of, at the surface is taking place in terms of the indentation that is characterized to measure the hardness. So, greater uh, the penetration of the indentator, uh, indenter at a given standard load, lower is the hardness. Various hardness test methods uh, means the common principle is same in the various hardness test methods, but and these but these can be compared on the basis of these three parameters like the type of indentator. Indenter, we can use the ball shape, pyramid shape, or the cone shape, and there will be difference in the magnitude of the load, and then which aspect of the indentation we are measuring, whether it is the surface diameter, it is the depth of indentation or it is the average length of the diagonals. These are the different uh, kind of uh, the loads which are used in the different test methods and uh, the different uh, kind of the indenters which are used and the different aspect which is measured for uh, characterizing the hardness. In case of Brinell, it is the diameter, in case of the Rockwell, it is depth, in case of the noob and the weaker's hardness, it is the uh, diagonal uh, means the average diagonal uh, uh, length of the indentation is measured. The penetration due to the applied load is affected by the unevenness on the surface and the presence of the hard surface film such as oxides, lubricants, dust, dirt, etcetera. If these are present, so the means hardness is affected by the impurities present at the surface and these uh, should be removed if we are applying the major load, load, major load directly to cause the indentation. So, the surface therefore must be cleaned and polished before conducting the hardness test. But uh, in some uh, of the methods, no um, uh, major load is applied directly while in other methods, uh, first minor load is applied and thereafter major load is applied. So, what is the logic behind use of the major and minor loads? The minor load is used in case especially in case of the Rockwell hardness test and this is used uh, to ensure the firm metallic contact between the indenter and the sample surface by breaking the surface film and impurities present at the surface and because of this, uh, uh, but the minor load does not cause any indentation and indentation caused by the an indentation is mainly caused by the major load. So, minor load of the 10 uh, kg is normally applied uh, and, the, uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the cleaning and pulsing of the surface films uh, it becomes mandatory in all those cases where the major load is applied like in the Brinell test, but in those methods where minor load is applied first like in the Rockwell test, uh, this uh, polishing and the perfect cleaning is not required because minor load helps to make the firm metallic contact between the indenter and the surface which is being tested. So, in case of the Brinell hardness test, full load is applied directly whereas, in case of the Rockwell test, minor load is applied first before applying the major load. So, in case of the Brinell test, the steel ball in of the different indenters, steel ball of the different indenter diameter is used as an indenter for hardness test means the steel balls of the different sizes can be used for as an indenter for the hardness test and the diameter of the um, indentation in case of the Brinell is measured to calculate the projected area and determine the hardness. So, either uh, the diameter of the uh, diameter of the indenter and the, the, the kind of indentation which has been formed uh, that is uh, measured and uh, the Brinell, uh, hard, uh, Brinell hardness test results are expressed in terms of the pressure generated due to the load P and it is calculated using the ratio of the load applied and the projected area of the contact means that is affected by the uh, indenter and load range can vary from the 5500 uh, to the 3000 kg and can be applied this range of the load can be applied depending on the type of material to be tested and higher is the load applied, higher load is applied for the harder material as compared to the soft materials and Brinell hardness number is calculated using this equation where P stands for the load applied and capital D is the diameter of the indenter 
and small d is the diameter of the indentation which is formed at the surface of the component. Then Rockwell hardness test, Rockwell hardness test uses the minor load of the 10 kg and the major load of the 50 to 100 uh, 150 kg range and that is decided by the kind of a scale which is to be used as per the requirement of the material to be tested. Minor load is not changed and out of these B and C scales, A scales are normally used and the different indenter and the major loads are required for each scale. Uh, the steel ball and the diamond cone are the two types of the indenters which are commonly used in case of rock well testing. Is B scale uses the hardened steel ball and the major load of 90 kg whereas C scale uses the diamond cone and the major load of 140 kg. Then the Vickers hardness test, Vickers te hardness test uses the square pyramid shape indenter of the diamond and the load is ranging from the 1 to 120 kg. Average length L of the two diagonals uh, of the square indentation is used as a measure of hardness and the Vickers hardness number VHN or the diamond pyramid hardness is, uh, uh, is the ratio of uh, the load divided by the apparent area of the indentation is given by this relationship indicating the diamond pyramid hardness number or it, uh, it is also termed as the Vickers hardness number is obtained from the 1.854 uh, P, P is the up load applied and L is the average length of the diagonal. So, uh, now uh, I would like to summarize this presentation. In this presentation, we have tried to see the purpose of the inspection and testing which is commonly used. We have also observed that what are the different stages of the inspection and testing and then if after the completion of the weld joint to assess the weld qualitatively and quantitatively, different methods are there. So, in this presentation mainly we have talked about the three destructive tests. These were the tensile test, hardness test and the bend test and these tests are very commonly used in the industry to assess the quality of the weld joint. In the coming lecture, we will try to see the other uh, destructive tests. Uh, uh, which are commonly used to assess the quality of the weld joint. Thank you for your attention.